Mic check, mic check. Mic check. I think that's better now. I can hear... I tell you, man, OBS. Can you hear me now? I'll say, I think I fixed it. Yeah, at least I'm I'm getting feedback in OBS now. I wasn't wasn't uh, doing that before. So uh, thanks for bearing with me. So I guess I'll, you know, what I was saying is, um, you know, hope hope everyone's day is going pretty well, and you know, so glad everyone's here. We'll uh, we'll get this uh, we'll get this going. So one of the things I wanted to look at is um, my Discord because I think a, a couple of cool things were mentioned there. I, I want to show you a quick tip here. So let's go here. Yeah, so thank you. Thanks again, Sebastian, for the for the call out there. So, um, well, not memes, but you know, a lot of cool stuff has been happening in memes. But um, um, if just in case you don't know, um, if you go into my Discord, I actually have a CAD tech help channel. So if you're having trouble with your SolidWorks or really any CAD um, thing, you can actually head into this channel and we just kind of talk about, you know, what we're facing and ideas to rectify that. So um, I've been talking with this guy over here, you know, one of the recent members, Virus. He's a good virus, I promise. But, um, you know, he poses a great question. He says, I have 20 mates to, um, presumably, he, he means a, an assembly, that he doesn't want and have deleted from the assembly. But the mates are, are remaining and it's just bulking up, meaning there's a bunch of suppressed mates in his assembly. Is there a way to remove unused mates? And that one actually stumped me for a second. So, you know, let's create that situation here right now. So this is the assembly I was working on yesterday. So let's say I take this, these two mates and I suppress them. So the question again to reiterate is, how do I get rid of the suppressed mates? And you may might be thinking, well, why not just click on them and delete it? And you know, that's fine for an assembly like this one where it's only two, but imagine if you have a larger, larger assembly, maybe with dozens of mates, and you just have these suppressed mates just cluttering everything up. How can we clean this up? So I thought about one thing here. And in 2019, um, SOLIDWORKS actually added a, a feature. So if you have 2019 plus, you can actually right click on the mates folder here. And then you can actually say group mates by status. And when you do that, you can see that all of the mates have gone into one folder or another. So at that point, you know, if you have like dozens of mates, so all grouped together, you can box select and delete them. So that's the first thing I thought of, but um, virus only has two, 2018. So is he out of luck? Well, I thought about it and there's another way. So I'm gonna put that back the way it was. So alternatively, what you can do is you can scroll all the way to the top, you know, click on the top of the tree here or right click and it's again it's doing the weird thing where um for some reason just giving me a, a blank menu hold on let me see if it just has to do with my come on man such a bummer come on i want to show them the cool thing all right well that is giving me uh, issues. So I think it's because I, I have this low resolution monitor, but I will show you, um, I'll show you the video clip that I posted in the discord. So let's do this right here. So here. So you see, I put the mates back. So if you go and you right click, you get this menu and there's this feature. Wait, why, why am I going so fast? <laughs> so you right click and in this menu, there is a, an option called purge unused features. 
And if you click that, it'll actually collect all the mates you don't have used. Uh, you, that, it'll collect all the mates that are suppressed, but not only that, but if you created a plane and forgot to use it for some reason, it'll show that in this list. And that's like a convenient way of like rounding them up all together. And then you just basically hit okay. And you know, just say yes to the confirm delete and they just go away. So that's a thing that, you know, I think is very cool and, um, you know, very nice thing to have in your toolbox. So uh, hopefully you learn something there. You know, I think um, having, a asking these kinds of questions really are, is just so great for, uh, for learning. So, you know, only found on the Virtual Flat CAD official Discord. Okay, so that's what I wanted to... Uh, wanted to show you here. So today's model of the day, and let me reach over for it over here. Uh, I'm thinking of doing, doing this. So if you haven't seen this before, wondering what it is, you may know if you, if you play music, this is a drum kick pedal. So this um, is what a drummer has right at his feet. And when he presses this pedal with his foot, you see this uh, this beater goes and, well, it beats on a drum. And that's how uh, drummers strike the kick drum. You know, gets its name because, you know, foot. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think we should uh, create a version of this that uh, we can have in CAD. And I think it'll be cool. Um, I don't think I'll reverse engineer this in perfect detail, but I do want to make it look pretty cool. So, you know, I'll put some effort into it, but I won't be, um, for example, modeling every single hole, you know. So I'll put this here. You know, got my calipers. And I think I'll do this in a bottom-up assembly way. So, uh, basically, I'm gonna start with the base and just model one part after another and put them together one at a time. Um, it's different than I than I do the um, the mechanical movements. Oop, I deleted those uh, mates, so um, I deleted those mates, so that's why it's all um, it's all floppy like that. But um, yeah, it's more of a more of a standard way. Oh, we got Coronite in the chat. How's it going? It's good to see you again. How how are you? Gl so glad you can make it out. We're we're making a we're making a kick drum today. So, you know, let's start by uh, you know, I don't really need to save that. Start with a a blank part. And I think it's going to be the same as yesterday where uh, where all the <laughs> windows are spawning on the <laughs> on the other screen. So, I think the the with the base looks like it's a bent piece of sheet metal. This heel here is kind of fixably attached like it yeah, it's a screwed in through the bottom. I might model that all as one piece. As well as these struts on the side here. I think I'm just gonna model all of that in one piece, just to keep it uh, just to keep it simple. Uh, Hugo's in the chat. Hello, friend. I saw you at 3D Experience event. Oh, glad glad to hear it. Uh, would like to know what you recommend me to do before taking the CSWE exam, apart from studying, of course. Where can I get material to study or get a sample exam? That is a that is a great question. And um, right here on this channel, you know, I do have some uh, CSWE practice things. But what, what I'll show you here, you know, I met a really good friend over at 3D Experience World where, uh, where you saw me. So I'll show you this, this guy's channel. So let me uh, pull this up, go here. So search up this guy. His name is SolidWorks Lucas. Yep, this channel right here. So, just a channel just like mine, and um, 
you can see he's got plenty of videos on the uh, uh, on the expert exam. And um, if you don't know this guy, so this is Lucas Krupe. This is the youngest certified SOLIDWORKS expert in the world. He got his CSWE when he was 15 years old. Isn't that amazing? 15 years old, basically the highest level of certification you can get, at least as a customer. Um, Electric in the chat, hello, popping in to say hi before I drive home from work. Yeah, hello there, and um, make sure you drive safe. You know, can't be uh, can't be too careful. You know. Um, so yeah, you know. So the short answer to your question is, um, you can check my channel. I have I have some practice stuff, although I I haven't been really um, talking about the exam all that often. I'm kind of like, you know, focusing on my CAD model of the day uh, project. But um, yeah, another great great place, SolidWorks Lucas. Go subscribe to him. Go check him out. You know, he's gonna. You're, you're in good hands in that channel. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Model CI, hello from Germany. Oh, yeah, I definitely... Uh, so, Mo Model CI, um, uh, Too Tall Toby's CAD tournament. We were in the first tournament together, but I think we both got rolled by Ivan. <laughs> uh, Ivan Lauren. You know, that, that guy is incredible with his... With his solid works, but you know, I'm so glad. I'm so so glad to uh, see you here. But yeah, you know, I just wanted wanted to, uh, you know, show you this channel here. Yeah, no problem, Hugo. You know, that's that's what what I'm all about, man. It's just like, you know, connecting people with in the community together. It's like the problems that you have with with solid works or with your design. Someone's probably had it before. It might be me, but it might be someone else and. You know, we just bringing it all together is the the way to go. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna get started with my uh, my part here. So how do I want to do this? What what shape even is this? So I can probably draw. So I see one plane of symmetry. Well, not almost, but I'm probably just gonna approximate it just to keep my life simple here, and you know, not keep the stream so long so I think I'm just gonna throw a center line and um, you know a fun way actually let me sh show you something cool so if you get into a regular line you can press alt and C to switch it into a center line so that's pretty cool I do that all the time so I'm just gonna draw a center line straight through the origin just like that and then let's say um, make infinite length. So I think I'll put the origin at the heel. So I draw something like this, and then it flares out like that. And yeah, something like that. And I think I might just get rid of that. Because if I box select all of these and hit mirror entities, it'll throw all of that to the other side. You know, so so that's a pretty cool little uh, little tidbit. If you select, you know, any number of segments and one center line, um, it will automatically mirror when you hit mirror. Like it won't even take you to the menu; it'll just do it for you. So you know, in that regard, I think it's. Uh, I think it's very cool. So let's get some measurements here. Let me move my, my my keyboard. So that's got a width of like three, three inches. Yeah, and I'm I am a a, a filthy uh, imperial units user, so I apologize in advance for using um, inches rather than. Uh, metric like the rest of the civilized society but um you know it works it works oh sebastian with a great question he says how do you see those arrows in the operations tree when you put the mouse on fantastic question you know here's a here's a great little tidbit so let me just exit this sketch you know i'm not done with it yet but um you know to illustrate my point um he's saying if i hover over 
or really just click on anything to highlight and select it, I get these arrows, so these purples. And if I click on this, you see that I got arrows going upwards. And you may notice the two different colors. And if I may uh, break from, I guess, proper procedure here, you know, I haven't really, um, haven't really finished with my sketch, but let's say that I, I just extruded it simply like that. So here, here we go. So sketch one has two different color arrows coming from it. So first, so first thing, what even are these arrows? Um, these are reference arrows. They tell you what the parent and the children of whatever you've selected are. So what, what that means is if I click on sketch one, the blue arrows are pointing to its parents. So basically they're saying sketch one cannot exist without the origin, makes sense, and it cannot exist without the top plane. Also makes sense considering I started my sketch on the top plane. But it's also saying that sketch one is a parent to boss extrude one. Hence the purple arrow saying that if you delete sketch one, boss extrude one would also get deleted by, by default. So that's what those arrows are. So to finally get to Sebastian's original question, how do you get them to show up? All you gotta do is you right click on the top of the tree here. And again, with this blank menu, that's so silly, but um, the two buttons you're looking for are here and here. Dynamic reference visualization parent, dynamic reference visualization child. You press both of these down and you'll get those, um, you'll get those uh, arrows showing up and uh, yeah, it makes life a lot easier. All right, so I hear Discord pinging a lot, so, which is probably good because like, I bet people are, uh, I bet people are uh, popping off. So let me, can I mute this tab? Mute, yeah, there we go. Yeah, we, we so, sorry about that. I probably should have done that uh, a little bit earlier. Yeah, but it's good stuff. So let's get back to get back to fully defining our sketch here. So how long is that slanted part? Like seven inches, give or take. Say seven with a width of five. Five. And we're getting pretty close here. Yeah, this segment's like two and a half. And this one's going to be a bit tougher, but I'll just say that this is two. And we should only have one more dimension left. And I'll, I'll just call that one. And of course we can adjust this as we go along. Yeah, and in, in my actual kick pedal that I have in front of me, it's like sheet metal with extra bends and stuff like that. But I'm just gonna skip that level of detail. You know, maybe I'll make this a bit thicker. Like that. And let's uh, get this cell saved up. So you're gonna live in 483. Oop. Kick. Pedal. And we'll call that base. All right, so I need another. Oh, I need to change my uh, mouse settings because I um, cause I love my mouse settings. Okay. So I switch from my gaming settings to SOLIDWORKS settings. It also makes my mouse glow red, which is pretty cool. I can see that. <laughs> yep. So I'll dismiss that. And there we go. 
Let's see if I can just grab this like that. And how thick does that want to be? It's by inspection, we're only like three quarters of an inch. Okay, and looks like there is actually a part where this is cut back a little bit so you can actually insert the moving part of the pedal. So let's do that. I'll assume that this is a square. So let's say that's equal. And I'll just take the overall width of what the tab would be. So that looks like that was one and a half. So here, so I'll get my line, hit Alt C to make it into a center line. And so box select. So I have a bunch of stuff, one center line, mirror entities just brings it over to the other side. One point five. Okay, so that fully defines our sketch. So it looks strewed. And I'll double click on this surface which changes the end condition from up to surface and selects that, uh, that face to be the end condition. So we'll do that. Let me adjust something here. Yeah, there we go. Chat's a little screwy. You know, I'm still, still uh, working my way through OBS and figuring out all the little, uh, all the little kinks. I think part of the issue is that I have a very weird setup. <laughs> like, uh, I have like four monitors. Yeah. So I think OBS freaks out a little bit when it sees all the monitors and like, Oh, what should I be looking at? And, um, yeah, it's pretty silly. All right. So we have where the pin will go through. And so how do we want to do that? All right, I'm just gonna put it centered on that face. So, you know, really cool trick. Another one that I love to use. If you go to your reference geometry and you hit point and you just click a face, it gives you the centroid of it. So I don't really have to do any like construction geometry. So when I do this hole, And I'm just going to make up a size for it. Yeah, I can just do it just like that. And say through all. Okay, we're, I think we're getting somewhere. So I'm just going to do some details to help improve the overall look of it. So maybe like a fillet like that. And we'll put one right here too. Actually, that one's too big. Let's get one like here, but not so big. And, okay, the point needs to go away now. Let's get one like that too. All right, and for right now, I'm just gonna leave, leave that, I hit save. And the next thing I'll tackle here it's gonna be our uh, these tall boys. <laughs> Actually, I just noticed it. this it's cracked. I mean, this thing's in pretty beat up condition. Like, it, you know, the chain is all rusty. Like that. This will be um, interesting when I uh, get the chain. I'm I'm not sure how I'm gonna try and articulate it when I do the motion study, but we'll find out. We will definitely find out. So for this tab, you know, it's got kind of like a design, but I'm just gonna do this uh, simply. So question is, do I want to uh, include this midpoint in my sketch? I think so. So if I do, whoop, if I do that, like this, and I'll say, yeah, I gotta figure out what is up with that. 
right click glitch. And I've definitely seen worse. All right, so now I have a, a tab that is centered around the, the flat of that face there. And it looks like from the center, it's like seven and a half inches. 7.5. And the overall width is one and a quarter. One point two five, and this one is over two because I'm specifying a radius. You want to watch out for that. That'll get you in your uh, in your certification exams if you're not careful. Okay, so what is the overall thickness of this? One inch? Sure. Let's go with it. Like that looks uh looks very plain, but we can put some some detail detail on that. Oop. I don't know how I goofed that up. <laughs> this one. Thank you. Uh, Model CI. How many graphics cards do you have installed? Just one, and it's a it's a gaming card too, so it's not even one of those SolidWorks approved ones. Oh, I mean, wor works works just fine. Well, other than you know the um, the blank right click thing, so this problem started showing up when I actually bought my 4K monitor, and you know put it in tandem with standard definition monitors. So my hunch is it's trying to display something in scale with the 4K monitor, but since I'm not working on it. It just kind of kind of glitches out, so that's that's just what I what I suspect. Who knows? I just hope that you know. There's usually a workaround for everything. Am I right? So I do want to make this look a little better, but how do I? How should I go about doing that? Maybe. Just maybe. Let's draw a multi-contour in here. And there's like a bearing in here, but I'll probably won't even draw that. So let's like do that. And then let's get the shell. Ooh, I might need to do this before the mirror, so I'll roll back. Shell. Hello? Did that do anything? That's probably way too thick. Okay, so that worked. Yeah, can I have a preview? There we go. So I go one step above and that's too much. I might just try and get... 0 0.090? Okay. Hmm. I don't really like the way that looks. All right, well, I gotta, st you know, the thing is, I gotta stay focused. Like, I just, I can nitpick all the details to to death, but I just gotta stay focused. Okay, so at least this base has all the the features I need. And actually, I'm just gonna do a sanity check dimension, and just check the space in between those tabs, and I'm getting like three and a quarter. All right, so I'm getting a little bit less, but that's that's totally cool. So let's start the assembly right now. Yeah, and with the first component of an assembly, you just hit the check. What that does is it puts, here, bring this out. It puts the origin of the part with the origin of the assembly, so you don't have it in like some weird space all the way out here. So it's pretty nice in that regard. All right, so I think next, let's work, let's work on this part here, thing that pivots on the base. 
I'm not even sure what this call that that is called. I don't actually play the drums. I mean, I can, but not very well. Not enough to, <laughs> not enough to claim that I can play the drums for a band or anything like that. But um, you know, can have some fun on a kit, you know. Um, so how do I want to do this? Looks like we can do some fun spline work to actually make it look like something, you know. So again, drawing on the top plane. Let's start off like this, go over here. And I want to get a center line up like this. So first dimension I'll take is the overall length of the member, which is like 10 inches, which is not 25. There we go. Let's grab an overall width at two and three quarters. Like that. Yeah, I think the, so I'm setting up for spline sketching, of course. And I think the easiest way to go about it, especially when you're, you know, basically connecting two points, basically fully define your sketch before you put your spline in there. That'll give you a lot more control as to, um, as to how you get it to look like. Okay, this is tough to take because I can't actually fit my measuring tape. One and three eighths. Oop, yeah. Point three seven five. Okay, and now let's get a spline. I just really adore these um, these style splines. They're they're very. They can be very wonky to use at first, but I really enjoy them. Yeah, so let me set this to vertical, like that. Have this, oh, I don't know if I wanna snap there yet, so. Oh, so uh, something I just did there. So you see how this is like wanting to snap? If you hold down the control and just move around, you see it doesn't wanna snap anymore. So you hold down control after you start dragging something and it temporarily disables the snaps. It comes right back when I let go. This is pretty cool. It can definitely help if you're trying to put something, uh, put something very precisely, you know. Um, you know. Let me get yet another center line like this and get a dual dimension. So how wide is this, like three and a quarter? Like that, and as I thought, I'm overshooting it a little bit. So I can say this with that is tangent. Okay. And let's see where the largest part is. So it's like, so this is six from over here. Yeah, so for some reason it doesn't want me dragging it anymore. That's okay though, because I can control it just like this. No, I'm just kind of just putting dimensions on this style spline itself too. To uh, define it further. Yeah, so the, the the dimension or the relation I was avoiding, I ended up putting in the end anyway. All right, that's um, now that's a sketch if I ever saw one. So, uh, oh, let me do this because if I box like the whole thing, there's actually more than one center line now. Uh, with the select chain, oh, that's too bad. Fine, I'll click them. There we go. That's looking pretty okay. And 
What thickness am I making this thing? Half an inch, pretty thick. 0.5. So we get something that looks just like this. And let me save. And call that petal. So let me make the cutout here that will interface with the base. Hmm. I can grab this vertex. Am I streaming 27p? 720p? Uh, yes, I am. Um, I wanted to do 1080, but my, I don't think my computer is powerful enough. Um, and I think, you know, if things keep going well, like, you know, um, you know, this, this is going really good because, you know, I have a handful of people hanging out with me. It's great. Um, I'm thinking of switching to a dual PC setup. That is, um, a PC where I just put SOLIDWORKS on it so it can take up as many resources and then leave another computer just for streaming. And, um, I think that way I could you know, get a uh, 1080p, maybe even 60 frames per second. You know, I think that would be think, very cool. All right, so let me get this midpoint. Coincident. Yeah, and I actually don't recall how much I've I made this. Hello? Oh, let me get into the part. Dun, dun. Yeah, one and a half. That took w way longer than it should have. Okay. Through all. Just like that. And actually, here, let me roll back because what I can do here is a full round fillet. So I'll go to fillet, full round, select the three faces and it automatically sizes a fillet to give you that effect. And now this may have a issue. Yep, just as expected, no problems. But the reason I did the fillet before is that um, you can only do one, uh, one full round fillet at a time. So if I did it after, I would have to do two. So this way is a bit more uh, efficient. Okay. So yeah, this is dangling. And it seems to have resolved itself. It looks like that was a redundant relation. Okay. And um, now let's grab the right plane this time. Let's leave it like that. And then gotta cut through all both. All right, so that's a basic function, but uh, and actually, before I get to the details, let me actually look at the other side because the this other side is where it actually interfaces with the chain. So let me study that a minute. Yeah, it looks like it's on, on a little bracket of sorts. But again, just to keep this simple, I'll probably just model it as like a as a pin joint. Oh, now, now my menus are back. Do, 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 do. So that's like a, a half by three quarters. 
0.75. Yeah, let's do that. Extrude cut. Oh, I just realized, I think... Yeah, I, I think I do want... So I basically, basically want the same thing on this side too. So full round. And then fix the dangling relation. So that's right here. For some reason they're black. Oops, come back. And get that on the silhouette edge. There we go. Just like that. And I have to do the right plane again. And like that. Say through, oh, should have done through all both. There we go, just something like that. Hit save. Oh, Model CI, you don't need a second PC. I have a 10, 1060 G, GeForce and streaming SolidWorks with 108. Wow, okay. I, you're the person I need to talk to because I've been kind of struggling with this. The NVMe codec. Not sure what, what that is, and I think that's the problem. So I'll definitely... Uh, I'll definitely look into that a little bit, and I might even I might even reach out to you actually for some help. Yeah, I'm just gonna make this look like a thing. Yeah, because I have a GeForce 2080, and it just yeah, it it just well, I mean. Right now it's all right if I set the settings low, but um, you know, two days ago I tried running a game at the same time and it was still dropping frames at 30 frames per second, 720p. So yeah, if you can help me with that, I'd be um, I'd be a happy man. Wow, I basically just put that perfectly at six. That's that's a little crazy. And I think this is just missing a rotational degree of freedom, no? Oh, okay. All right, that'll do it. Like that. And now, how do I want to do this? Because there's like a pattern here that I kind of want to emulate, but I don't want it to take so long either. Let me see, how do I want to do this? Here, I'll show you what it looks like. Let me see, let me see if I can do this without bashing my screen or my camera. It looks like that, where it has like these little crossbar things. It's like I certainly can do them, but I'm trying to think of a smart way of doing them. Hmm. So I might just start off with this pocket first. Yeah, actually, now that I think of it, you know, that's the kind of thing with me. It's like, I, I always tell myself that, you know, I want to keep things simple, but then like when I get into it, I just really want to put um, more and more details. So I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm, gonna stick. I'm just going to put some text here. I'll maybe just put like virtual flat or something. Okay, so centered. And let's change the font to something else.
impact if you want to make a meme. Right, let's just do this one. This one's kind of cool. And try 0.75. Yeah, it's too big unless it's <laughs> just barely, honestly. I'm cool with that. <laughs> All right, no, that's a thing. Let's go to the assembly, and I realize I haven't saved this assembly yet. Let's get this component into here. Yeah, and actually, you know, just to make the visual styles consistent, I'm going to suppress this fillet. There we go. Now, if I get face to face, then this to that. Okay, we're 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 getting somewhere. All right, so let's see. Oh yeah, model saying uh, twenty eight has two special strips, uh, two special chips for streaming. Ten, yeah. So yeah, you know, I'll, I'll probably I'll probably reach out to you because like if clearly you've got it to <laughs> to a way where. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I remember you. Don't. No, don't worry, man. I, I, I definitely remember, re remember you. Um. But yeah, I'm clearly doing something very, very wrong. So, any help is appreciated. Let's see. What now? Okay, I guess I'll make the axis that goes, or not the axis, the axle. Yeah, by the way, I don't know if that's the right terminology for anything. Let's just make it into a new part. And um, it's actually like hexagonal stock, so I'll do it like that. Uh, t -t -t -t. Yeah, let's grab the right plane and not a rectangle, but this. Move that horizontal. Grab my calipers. That's point four. And that goes oops. Mid plane and three was the distance. And then do this again. And I let's make that a quarter. Five. So that should have it stick out just like this. Axel. Right, let's get into here. Do like that, and then we can even say, well, the thing is, I, I, I don't want to put a width mate because I don't think width mates are supported in motion study. So yeah, you know what? Let me go back here and change this to that, and then this, rebuild. And let's do it like this. Okay, now we have this thing. All right. 
So I think what I'll do next, because I think I'm going to make the chain the last thing I do, basically. All right, so here, let me show you again. Actually, I can't even change my stage. Yeah, so, oop. here we go. So I modeled this axle already. So this chain sits on what I'm gonna call an, a, this eccentric. So I'm gonna model this eccentric next but I think I may model it right on the axis, uh, in the axis part, since um, you know that'll save me a couple mates, and you know don't don't really mind the uh, really mind multi-body parts in my environment, since um, most of these are just uh, one and done, you know. Let's get back in here. Yeah, we can put some effort in the eccentrics, by the way. So let's go to the front plane. And I'm going to try and draw a cross section here. It's going to look, this might be too detailed, but let's see. Try and draw something like that. Turn that into construction. It's another way of going about it too. You know, if you don't want to draw the construction line first, you can always uh, can always set it later. All right, let's uh, lock this down with some uh, with some dimensions. So th this. Point eight seven five, and that shoved that my stuff all the way to the other side, but it's okay. We shall, we shall be all right. Like that. Yeah, what I should have done is start with the smaller dimensions first. If you do that, then it prevents that. But I'm like, ooh, look, big. the first dimension I see is the one I want to put. It's all good. We'll get it fixed either way. So this and that. Okay, and this is visually consistent with what I'm seeing here. It's like one and a quarter. <laughs> so I also drew this thing too tall. Come down. So what is that distance? Here to here is point two. So I'm just grabbing the dimensions that I can conveniently get with a caliper. It's like 150. We're almost there with this profile. Dual dimension, 0.9, and there should be only one left. Oops, I don't want that midpoint. All right, and we can mirror. 
and then revolve. And check merge result. And that's what the chain's gonna be resting on. Here, let me save because that was a that was a lot of effort. Let's see, how do I wanna do this now? Because I, I, now I want to cut. I want to trim this thing down because it's not like an entire pulley. So how, how do I do this? A lot of people don't realize that I'm figuring a lot of stuff out for the first time. Even after all these years. So I'm going to try something here. So what if I performed an extrude cut like this to that? I was hoping I could take, you know, turn this back into a full thing with um, a delete face, but I might just have to put another revolve, which is, which is fine don't mind it so much and honestly that looks evenly spaced for three so it's like 120 degrees Oop. no I don't want that much I want two and 20 or 60 Yeah, I think that will do, except I just have to, uh, <laughs> I just have to bring that bit back. And that's okay because I can show this, start a new sketch, and boink, there we go. So this will bring this back. Probably not the most efficient way I could have modeled it, but, um, I think this will work for us. And then to actually make this fit on the shaft here, let's get an indent feature. And set to cut. So that'll make um, an axle sized hole in this, um, in this eccentric. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Okay, so how is this lining up? So, I think I have to bring, bring these tabs a little bit back this way towards the heel. Because if you look at the chain here, it's basically vertical. Meaning... So if you look at my SOLIDWORKS screen now, meaning that th basically this end should be right underneath the tangent of this, meaning either the pedal's too short or this is too far forward. So I have to edit these. Let me put that back larger again, and then get rid of this. And yeah, you know, let's just get an overall distance from here to here. Yeah, so this is closer to to ten rather than ten point seven five. Okay, that's totally fine. Yeah, now that's that's a lot better. And even 
then it can stand to go back a little further but being that you know I kind of don't want to bring this back that much further I might just make this a little longer okay maybe by that much Yeah, I think that'll be uh, that'll be pretty good here. Let me put something there, and oh, additionally, on the other end of this, there is. Kind of this other cam that interfaces with a spring. So I'm going to have to do that because that's definitely part of this uh, mechanism here. Let's see. Yeah, let's start. Let's start here. So over on this side to model it's kind of like a like a coffin shape almost let's get that fixed up Yeah, and I'm not going to stress too much about the, the dimensions here. Okay, that with the origin, please, being very difficult. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe if I delete line from here. Okay, no, it's just being all all sorts of difficult. All right, fine. You know what we'll do? This is really silly. Then I'll just do that and say this equals this over two. Oops, didn't want that. Make it like that. So this dimension got deleted. So what happens to this? Yeah, it's aired. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's restored. Okay, and uh looks like we have an equation that's upset. Hello, I don't see any upset equations here. Rebuild, there we go. It's happy. Let's see, so how does this assemble? Oh, we lost the, uh, we lost the mate, but no biggie. We'll, we'll take care of it. So actually, I think I think I might th want this the other way. Yeah, so let me uh, view mates and we'll flip. Oop. 
For some reason, it's not letting me in there, so I'm just going to delete it and re-add it. Hmm. No, this, this won't work. I just straight up need it on the other side. That's very silly. Because I want the spring to be on the right side. I guess it doesn't have to be on one side in particular. But I do want it to like sort of match. Yeah, let, let me go back into my part. So, you know, a cheesy way of doing this is changing this from surface plane. Say go the other way. Might make it a little thinner even. There you go. So we don't have to like move the sketch or anything like that. And re-add this. Yeah, honestly. Trying to see what orientation this should be. Yeah, I think it's important because, you know, this thing is like weirdly symmetrical in some ways. Um, I need to add the, I need to add the kick, the kick pretty much. I'm sure I have this in the, the right way. Let's see. Right now, I just want to see past that. Yeah, I think I'll sketch on this plane here. So we're going to start with, you know, something to put, something to interface with the shaft. Hmm, what now? Just need some dimensions, that's what. So that's like one, 1.5 and one. And I'll roll with this, even though there's multiple contours, but you can always just click to select. And that's 0.5, so that's good, but I'll uncheck that for right now. Okay. And then, let's get a full round. And let's actually put the beater on here. Yeah, that's actually right where it needs to be. And I'll probably make it longer than it actually is, but just to get an idea. Let's make this four. And how did this merge? These are questions. Okay, that's good because I might use the move copy body command to move this with respect to this thing over here. Because I think I'm probably going to have to do the, uh, I'm probably going to have to do the motion study and see how it performs and then make adjustments. Like, just like real drummers do when they, um, when you have to assemble these things, like there's little, like little, uh, things that you can remove with a drum key and adjust like how things are are phased like if you want to only press your foot down a little bit and then hit or then or if you want to press your foot down a lot and then uh, before it actually strikes you know you can have it pretty much any way you want it's the musician's preference okay so we have a beater now and 
yeah, so there's really no convenient plane to do a revolve, so I will just you know, sketch on that plane, and that gets an overall size of one and a half, give or take. So we extrude, I'll do an offset of maybe a quarter going the other way. No, all the way please. Okay, that, I think that'll, that will suffice. Yeah, let's merge it with with this, please. And then grab a fillet. Make it kind of round, you know? Okay, so there's our beater. You notice I still haven't put the hole that actually interfaces with the uh, hexagonal shaft yet. But I'll do that later when I actually when I actually get this in a motion study and test a little bit. Okay, so right now the cam is resting like this, give or take. You know, I'm just kind of looking how it looks like then this thing is pointing straight down and it's not. So the question is, what angle is it right now? So I can adjust it in the, in the part. Uh, where's my measure box? Get over here. It's like 113. So if I move that maybe like 70, 75 degrees. So let's do this. Okay, this is sectioned. So this, sir, needs to be unmerged, first of all. Okay, nothing fails, which is good. And then, let me see hidden axes. And then I'll get my move command and say rotate about this axis. 75 or maybe negative 75 oops and <laughs> add copy on okay so this is what this is exactly what i want i want this thing to be pointing down so this is like its resting state where the spring is going to pull this arc as far down as it can so the cam looks like it's in the right place. So, you know, I'll show you a little closer here. So, yep, they're in its resting state. The cam is like moved forward. The cam is moved forward a little bit. And if you look on the other side, this thing here, the spring is pointing it down. So that's good. The only thing that's wrong is the beater. The beater should be facing when it's not being actuated, pointing towards your, pointing towards the heel. Here it's going the opposite way, so I'm probably going to take care of it the same way as I did the, the other way. Yeah. Let's get another move. Turn off copy this time. And let's try 150. Like that. Let's go back. Okay, we're getting somewhere. I think I moved it way too much though. Like one. Oh. Oh, I see, I see. I should actually progress it further. Okay. 
maybe all the way to 210. Oh, <laughs> or if you're like me, type 120, 210. That's looking pretty good now. Let's give that a save. So here's the interesting thing now. Here's the interesting thing. When I push this down, how do I actuate this? Because I know we have a belt and chain feature in SOLIDWORKS. So consider this, we, we have a belt and chain feature. Oh shoot, I, I need to put it back to the SOLIDWORKS screen. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, okay, so you know, I'll pose the question again. So what I have to do now is that when this thing gets pushed down, this thing comes forward. And um, question is, how do I do that? And I say that, <laughs> not exactly sure actually, because um, we might be able to do it with belt and chain. We might be able to do it with a gear mate, if you think about it too. Here, let's try it with a, a, a gear mate, just to be funny. So if I can kind of set this how it is and put this here. So if I mate, if I put, I don't need a mechanical mate, of course. So with this edge to, for example, this one, this will be totally, it's first off, it's the wrong way, but also the wrong ratio. So if I do maybe 12, because I want the length of the, um, or 10, I want the length of the, the pedal. <laughs> so th that's, a, that's one way of doing it. Never, I better never thought you'd expect that in the stream, right? That I'd actually make, make it able to move with a, um, a gear mate, right? But yeah, that's, you know, if you if you caught my presentation during SolidWorks World, mates are just math at the end of the day. Just because you put a gear mate and it works doesn't mean, doesn't give any indication of the quality of meshing or even of the gear as teeth. It's basically saying when this thing rotates a certain amount, this thing rotates an amount in the same or in a different direction. <laughs> That's too funny. All right, so a question is, are gear mates supported in SolarWorks Motion? Oh, hey, Tambora. So Tambora Station is, um, of course, uh, she's been in many of my other streams, and um, you know, good, good to, good to see you. You know, we're pondering something. Uh, we're pondering something here, you know? So, yeah, so I really want to get a spring into here because I, I do want to like most try and do a motion study on this. That's kind of accurate. Well, you, you didn't think that would have worked. Like, I, I always have these weird ideas, man. You know, it's just like, um, it's off the wall. I mean, that's a, that's a nice thing about you know, really getting to know SolidWorks and really how it works under the hood because, you know, the basic explanation of how things work is just usually not enough because, you know, a lot of people will tell you, you know, the gear mate is only used for gears. You have, you need to have two gears and they, they need to be in mesh and that's when you use a gear mate. It's like, well, not necessarily, you know, in the end, it's just this thing rotates one time, the other thing rotates twice. That's it. And then when you know know how it works to that level of detail, um, you can really use it to your advantage and use it for all this kind of weird stuff. But yeah, you know, eventually I want to animate the actual chain moving. You know, that's something I'm really, really wanting to go for. So I'm glad I, you know I you know didn't spend so much time with the detail because you know the stream's already running kind of long, but. Um, you know, we still got plenty of people here, which is really good. So I appreciate you guys hanging out while I, uh, while I think through this one. 
All right, so let's start off with a save. Let me go here. And the thing is, I need to get a tab here for the spring to go on. Hey, it's Danielle. What's up, Danielle? Good to see you here. We're just working on a little uh, kick pedal. Boom, boom, boom. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do a motion study and it's gonna look really, really, really awesome. Oh uh, yeah, and if, and if I run out of time, you know, let's say like, you know, maybe like in an hour from now and I'm not getting anywhere, um, I might just anim animate it like regularly and, you know, call it a day. Being that, you know, I'm planning to post a new mechanism every single day, you know, it's like, Sometimes you you get it you get it just the way you want. Other times you gotta compromise and yeah, you gotta work through it. And so let's get a tab. Whoops! If it wants to be not weird for a sec. Ooh, okay, well I sketched the wrong plane. That's embarrassing. Oh, hey Scott, so we got Scott in the chat saying, uh, hey, just got my CSWP and wondering what to do next to improve. Do you think doing daily builds is the best way to get better? In short, yeah. You know, it's, it's all about that practice. But it's not only that, it's, uh, it's about that targeted practice. So, if you're spending 365 days a year building cubes, you're not gonna improve very fast. You'll know how to make a mean cube, or a good cube, but it won't necessarily get you to the next level, you know, be it, you know, a, a certified professional advanced exam or even the expert exam, right? So it's just doing, um, it, it's just practicing with the stuff around you, but also kind of targeted. So, you know, I'll give you an example. Let's. You know, just suppose that your next goal is the CSWE. You're going to have to take, for example, the sheet metal exam at some point. So, you know, something you can do is, you know, the, the kick pedal I have right now has sheet metal parts on it. So instead of modeling it like blocks like I did, maybe you want to try and model the sheet metal components of this or your PC case or um, basically anything around and just kind of pushing yourself out of that comfort zone. And that's really the, the way to get better. And that and just like really, um, you know, what you're doing right now, just being on my screen stream, awesome. Because, you know, I find out these new things all the time. And um, I, I basically find out all the cool things I, I basically share all the cool things I find out about. So, you know, just uh, watching, watching stuff, content like this and, uh, you know, lots of great content out there on YouTube. Too. So yeah, I'm glad glad you're here. But yeah, let me actually sketch on the right plane this time, and um, let me get this hidden lines visible. So I I want it on this side, I believe. By the way, if you don't know that trick that I just did to get the tab. What you do, here, let me get this one done first. So you get your line tool, you draw a line, and then if you want an arc on the end of this line, you take your mouse and you back it right up onto that line and then come right back out. It's a really, really slick shortcut and I use it practically all the time as you can, as you can plainly tell. Yeah. Yeah, no problem, Scott, you know, I'm, and the, the thing is, like, I'm trying to, I'm, I am learning the best way still to teach other people because, you know, CAD is just this, like, really enigmatic thing where it's just like, oh, how do you become good at CAD? It's just like, it's like, how do you become good at music? You, you know, it's like, you, you, I mean, part of it is practice, but it's also just like just such an open-ended question. It's like, do you play scales all day? Do you learn songs? Do you just listen to music all the time? It's just this open-ended thing. So, you know, you know, see, hearing feedback from you guys and seeing like what really helps is, um, 
yeah, will uh, will help me learn how to teach you, you know. And also, you know, I, I um, plugged this a little bit earlier as well, but um, I have a Discord that you can uh, that you can check out. So if you haven't joined my Discord yet, I totally recommend it. And let me see, copy link location. Because I have, as you can see on the screen here, I have a, for example, a tech help channel, which got used today, where someone's saying, like, I'm trying to do this in SolidWorks right now, but it's not letting me. Or, you know, how do I do this without it being a pain in the neck? You know, we work through that and we learn new things as we go. And Tambora chiming in, challenging jobs force a person to get better. Totally agree. In my trade, it seems that jobs are always pushing my boundaries, forcing me to learn more to succeed. Awesome. You know, that's that's where I like to be personally too. Just I just need something to always keep me on my toes, you know? Sebastian chiming in, joining groups related to SolidWorks is very useful to me. Yes, being here is an example of that, learning something new. Yeah, and also another thing to check in your if in your geographical area, there's um, SolidWorks user groups where, um, well, before the current world events and how it is, you used to be able to go in in person and um, and basically show show your stuff. You go you go there, you can present, or you can just you know hang out there, eat the pizza that they have there. And you'll learn new stuff. You know, there's uh, presenters that were from resellers that have the official SolidWorks training material. Yeah, you know, Danielle echoing what I'm saying here. Join your local SolidWorks user group. Um, yeah, and with everything being virtual, you know, it's just more, um, uh, it's more accessible than ever. Though I am very excited that, you know, once everything returns back to normal, you know, it is really something else to you know, go and see your peers and see them in person. So, you know, I don't know when that's coming back, of course, but um, looking forward to it. You know, um, back in my old job, you know, I lived in New Jersey and there were about four, maybe even five user groups that were a drivable distance for me. And I presented it at all of them. Others, I just kind of hung out, just, you know, happy to support and, you know, <laughs> eat some free pizza because... You know, who doesn't like free pizza, you know? But it's like, there was one that I kept going to that, you know, had like an open mouse, you know, time at the end. It's like, after all the presentations were done, it's like, all right, open mouse. You know, anyone who wants to come up to my computer and show show a cool trick, go for it. And then people would go up and like, oh, did you know if you if you right click on this thing, it'll do this. And the people will be like, Psh. <laughs> so it's just, yeah, just being, being part of the community is is the best way and then practice to put it to uh, solidify those skills man I got really derailed from this from this slot but we are okay you know why because this tab is here all right alrighty then so how do I want to do this? All right, let me try and get this into a motion study right now. Yeah, because I don't, I know these aren't perfectly aligned. But going to my SolidWorks add-in, adding, adding in motion. Let me adjust myself a little bit. And start a new motion study just to see how this thing is going so far. So what I'm curious to know, so okay, GearMate is, appears to be active here. I'm gonna add a spring. It's gonna be very interesting. And I want a linear spring from this face to this face. Okay, it's, a, it's, a, it's sitting at a bit of an angle there. Not the worst thing ever, and I think it'll be functionally identical. Although, let me try this. Let me make the spring look a little bit more better. 
Oh, that's a thick spring. Looks like a pasta noodle. <laughs> Yeah, let me adjust the look of this. Yeah, it's intersecting a little bit, but I think it gets the point across. So, oh yeah, the important thing here. I'm just gonna leave the spring rate as is. You know, the spring rate is always kind of a crapshoot. Just do, do your best guess, honestly. But the important thing is to set the free length. That's how you actually get your spring to do something. Because if I hit okay, it's not gonna do anything. And that's because SOLIDWORKS has the spring le length equal to the distance of these two faces that I selected. When, if you don't displace the spring, you don't get any force. So I'm gonna make the spring, the free length shorter. But um, you, you can't go too crazy with this either. So, you know, it's gonna be tempting. It's like, oh, it's free length is six. six. Why don't you put, you know, one in there and make the spring force enormous. Well, that's when a lot of things start to break down, like, you know, parts like go through each other and stuff like that. So you just need, uh, you just need just a little bit of spring force. That chair is creaky. Yeah, I got, I got to hit, hit it with some WD-40, man. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, um, I'm always working on, you know, uh, getting my setup a little bit better. I'm still still learning every day. And I think the important thing is, um, you know, part of like the reason why, why I like kind of, you know, had a break from streaming. It's like, I have this like very perfectionist mentality of like, oh, I can't stream unless my stream is perfect. You know, everything's arranged perfectly with no chance of technical difficulties. But I think the important thing is just, just do it and just <laughs> and just roll with the punches, you know. Is there a limit made on the rotation of the uh, bonger? <laughs> I, I'm assuming you mean this thing. There is no limit. So actually you can keep rotating this thing freely. So the limit is gonna be set by this spring here. So it's attached to this eccentric, which should make it uh, default to a, a position. So, you know, just to test it, let me pull this up so that'll make upset the position of this and let's just hit calculate <laughs> yeah so that's actually to be expected that's that's working although it is like very angry like it is it is furiously vibrating probably have to add a damper so let me you know I'll get a you know an action replay on that <laughs> It's a ghost playing it. Got some ghost notes. So that is not what I want at all. It should spring back and come gently to a rest. So I'm going to add a damper. Again, from here to here. And this one has no like free length because it's just a damper. So if I do that, there we go. So now you could you could see it start to. Uh, slow down a little bit, although I think I want to make the damping more aggressive. So let me turn that up to five or something. Maybe more still. It could be that the spring is too strong. That's another thing. You know, that's a thing. You just got to be willing to like... You got to be willing to play around with it. Hmm. So let me extend this. Let's put a force. This maybe has a torque. Oops. So what does this need? Action, action part and point of application. Let me try this. Yeah, there we go. And then what does this box say? It's been a while since I used this. Hello? Can I clear? Okay, so... Let me put one. Except I don't want it to be applied all the time. I just want to 
There we go, just a little, a little bonk. So let's try that, and then, oh, you, you, you kind of saw it there. But it appears that it was not enough, so let me turn this to 50, because it was very subtle. And because this is silly, oops, to do this too. And, you know, just to make sure I'll do it here. All right, how's my bonk? Bonk, oh, okay, all right, that was a, that was aggressive. <laughs> oh, and that damping is so, yeah, the damping is very overwhelming. So let's turn this back to five. Spring, it's too strong. Too strong. 5.5. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, <laughs> rip. Well, good thing we're in CAD because, um, oh, that totally broke, huh? I don't want to see it again, honestly. Jesus. This thing just got Hulk stomped. Um, yeah, let's, um, try and be more gentle, yeah? So instead, times 50, let's try times 10. Bonk. Oh, that, that one was pretty good. I just really wanted to stop jiggling, though. Bonk. Yeah, it reaches all the way down there, which is like basically how how how, how that works. Let's see. There's also these other settings where I can play around with the the order of damper. Actually, let me play around with it. Okay, hello. Attempting to raise zero to a negative power. Okay, can't divide by zero. Well, I agree with that. Let's not, does this give the same error? Yeah. Yeah, so those negative. Oh, what is this now? Yuck. Fifteen. Hmm. I don't know, guys. Um, do you think it's supposed to do that? <laughs> I've just made this thing far angrier than this should ever be. <laughs> My God, <laughs> what have I done? Put this to six. Oh, I think it's camping up to 50 maybe? No. Nope, it's uh, still very, very boingy. And I've made it far worse. Oh, hey, Yashwanth. You, you caught me at a great moment. Um, this thing is going nuts, as you can, as you can plainly tell. All right, so there's something up with this damper. And the reason I'm going to delete it is something I noticed about it. Oh, now that's like barely anything. Yeah, maybe I don't have to delete it. Okay, we're back. We're back to kind of how it was. Yeah. 
Yeah, so changing the order of damper is just not a good idea. Um, definitely, the, the thing is, I, I don't really know in what situations you would use that in. And, you know, that's something that I definitely want to investigate in the future. I think it'll make a great video topic. So on, off. So let's do two kicks. Bump, bump. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, that is very, very cool. And actually, you know, I'll help this out a little bit by actually putting the initial position like close to where it needs to be. There's something else I could try too, is maybe a torsional damper. Okay, that's interesting. So maybe the two of these together is too much. Bonk. Okay, so that seems to be behaving a little better, at least with the with the jiggling. But it doesn't work anymore. So let's maybe turn that down. Okay, that might be the hot ticket there because it's getting closer. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God. How many ways do you think we can break this thing, guys? Ooh, that's uh, what do you think, guys? That's That's pretty good. I really like I really like that. All right, quick save. Some somebody somebody make him save. So let me change the view of this, so we can actually see how far this thing bops. Bonk. Bonk. All right, so it doesn't, it seems that it's not quite reaching far enough. Sorry about my squeaky chair. So two ways. I can either increase the force that this thing's being, um, this, and that's being exerted on this, or we just move this up a little bit. And again, that's like, you know, drummer's preference, like how, what the action of his uh, pedal is like, you know? Let me boost this up to 20. Bonk. Okay. That's, that's actually really close. Bonk. <laughs> I have to say, this is actually one of the more, one of the most fun things I've done, uh, done in a while. Bonk. <laughs> Little bonk. All right, I, you know, I gotta uh, not mess around with this thing for so much. Okay. Yeah, because because that happens. Oop. 
and like went into slow-mo. So I'm going to put it back to 30 and just leave it there. I'm too, uh, I'm definitely too uh, anal about it. So again, it's my, like my perfectionism <laughs> definitely works against me a lot of the time. 30. Hmm, interesting. So it's still, I wonder if I can just add collision between this and this. Fuck. Okay, plane. Let's see. Yeah, let's let's play around with how we can possibly make the chain look like. This is going to be interesting. Because Yeah, I don't know of exactly a way of making a chain follow this path. You know what? Yeah, because the thing is, like, that could easily take another hour. I might leave it for, for another time and just put maybe, like, a simplified a simplified version. Yeah, that's what I that's what I might do, but I might just do like a simple representation, maybe even with like a spring. Yeah, because I really didn't expect this to be so long, you know. Like midpoint. And then just make the spring. I don't think I make the zero. Oh, maybe I can. Okay, let's see what that does. Okay, that is really interesting. Yeah, because... Yeah, this always needs to be touching the, the tangent, basically. So I actually don't need it here. Here, I need to make a... Yeah, let me make a dummy part. Yeah, because I'd like to connect it right here, basically. So let's get a new plane here. I'll probably do this top-down style. Okay, so we have a plane. And say, add a new part on this plane. And I don't think it got it, actually, because it's giving me some weird, let me see, front. Yeah, I just threw it over at the, at the origin there. Here, let me get this all moved up. So if I, oh, cool. Top with this coincident. Let 
And then let's just put this here. When I find problems, when, when I find problems, uh, solve designs, I go from no, known points and work towards the center. Not, not sure if that, if that applies here. It, 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 no, it absolutely does. You know, when I'm, you know, you kind of find, you just keep tweaking like one thing at a time, right? Until you get exactly what you want. It's just, you know, it's kind of like derived from the scientific method. It's not like I'm trying to change everything at once and they're like, well, let's hope it works. It's like, okay, you know, that torsional damping coefficient, you know, is too strong. It's moving too slow. It's like dial it back a little bit at a time until you get a, a sufficient outcome. So, um, yeah, no, it ab absolutely works out. Okay, so now this thing should be in the right place. Oops. Let's get a point and put that there. So edit. There we go. So I need the origin, the vertical. Yeah, I don't want that to snap right there, but I do want it to be somewhere in that area. Yeah, so now we should have something like this, where this point is always representing the, the tangent. All right. Now let's see. Our spring. So instead of being there, see, can I click it from in here? Okay, I did grab it. That this is good. That is good. Okay. Oh no. Oh, yeah, cuz there's nothing in it. Oh, but it's doing what I want. Okay, that's not that's not so bad. Yeah. All right. So I think we're getting pretty close to the end here, I would say. Although I promise this will be the last time I play around with this. So I think it's just going it's just going way too hard on it. That's actually looking pretty cool. Not perfect. But when you're running a daily project, well, how much can be perfect, you know? Model saying, I'm going to sleep at 3 a.m. See you later. Yeah, you know, thank you for sticking with me for so long. Um, I'm trying to make the, I'll try and make the streams a little shorter in the future, but, um, you know, thanks for hanging out. You know that, that I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, no, I I think I'm really liking how this turned out. That's actually really good. You know what? I'm gonna call it there. I'm gonna call that a success. So I'm gonna save. Oop, can we stop looping? Let's save. And now I'm gonna find a a better angle for this to exist in. Roughly one that that uh, stands my own channel. <laughs> Hide sketches. I would like to show the little. There we go. Maybe something like. It's not moving. 
Okay, let me try that. Replace key. Kind of like that. All right, so now I just need to, first let me see if I can up the frame rate to a cool 60 frames per second. Hmm. Let's see it in real time. All right. So I actually want to add some appearances, but before I'm just going to save a test just in case I, I goof things up. You know, can never be too careful. I think that'll be fine, actually. It's a little off center, but I always take this into into Camtasia anyway, so that can be fixed there. All right, so I'm gonna go save that out. Shouldn't take very long, but in the meantime, let's take a look at some memes. So I've been popping off here in the, the meme channel a little bit. I'm gonna put more stuff in there, come on. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, so let's uh, take a look at some of these. <laughs> I'm gonna check out this cat. His eyes look like <laughs> his eyes look like nuclear Cheerios. <laughs> oh my god! How many of you in the chat have a cat? I d I don't have a cat, but I I kind of want one. Especially if it's like a nuclear cat like this. Yeah. Tamborora saying looks good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, looking forward to seeing the completed animation. Gonna run. Catch you another time. Awesome. Thank you for hanging out with me. You know, I'll catch you. Catch you some other time. And it looks like, okay, by the, by the little jingle, it looks like it has finished. So we can either run with that, but here, I'll try to quickly add some appearances. I'm not gonna stress too much about it, but first I need shaded with edges. Appearances, let's go painted with black. So that's one. Sebastian, only a dog. Wait, uh, I, I, also, I also have dogs, so I don't have a cat, but I do have dogs, plural. You know, one of them is Stella. So Stella has uh, is an English Springer Spaniel, and she's very protective of the family, but we love her for that. And then we have these two strays that we um, rescued from Puerto Rico. Well, not from, but like from the streets of Puerto Rico, is what I meant. You know, that's where my, my family's from, my heritage is from, you could say. And, um, yeah, these little puppies have grown, and um, they are tearing stuff apart like puppies do, but, you know, love them for that. Okay. So, let's get... I guess I can actually, um... So, now that I know this is fine, I can say indent here to here so now there's the, the holes made take that out and I think I'll leave that as like a steel like this and then say I'm gonna go I'm gonna go paint it again for the beater or actually Do I have a fabric? <laughs> There's sponge. Fabric. Cloth. Yeah, I'll just put this gray cotton. Why not? On this. 
and need it on this feature too. And then some painted black on that and on this as well. And let's just do this body. Yeah. Let's go back here. Hmm. Having second thoughts about the uh, the angle, but let's see. Bonk. <laughs> and bonk. All right, I think that's I think that's a that's really a wrap. So, you know, let me. Uh, oh, I might have to regenerate this. I'll rebuild it. So we'll save this out, look some more memes, and you know we'll call it a night. You know, sometimes I like to play games at the end of streams, but you know this this one's um, gone long enough, going on its third hour almost. So. You know, I still see a lot of people watching, which is awesome. Thank you for staying with me all this time as I'm like rambling and um, just generally hanging out, you know. So let's kick pedal to the sequel. There we are. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at these. Yeah, where we, where we got a cat. <laughs> it's always like very funny when you're also playing, <laughs> when you're playing games and it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm always like the kind of just like, oh, you know, you can, it's not always a controller's fault, right? But, you know, sometimes, stuff. <laughs> you know, your situation is really bad, especially with the internet. Like, I remember my old house, I did not have very good internet. So, um, yeah, I lagged a lot, but um, I don't think I lagged so hard that I was playing Minecraft all of a sudden. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. And this is the... Um, well, uh, I was about to say proper way to drive a roundabout. Definitely is the fastest way of getting through a roundabout if you think about it. You know, in terms of, you know, getting from point A to point B, you know, you can't really be, you know, just, you know, launching off the roundabout like a ramp. You know, that's always pretty good. All right, and ding dong thing means that we're done. So let's take a look and we'll... And I'll see you next time, but before. So can I open with? All right, fine. I'll play with VLC. So there's a, a kick. And that's pretty good. Yeah, I think I think I think that's a wrap for this for this time. So, yeah, you know, for to everyone who's um, stayed with me this entire time, again, thank you so much. Um, next stream is actually going to be this Saturday, just a you know just a few days from now. My goal is to stream three times a week for this entire month, and and hopefully even further beyond. So, you know, until next time, I'll catch you guys later.